Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. With your permission, I'm going to call this meeting to order. A warm welcome to everyone. Thank you for tuning in. All the way from uh, picnic bench by looks of it, Duncan. <laughs> First, first item uh, is approval of, of our agenda. I assume everyone's had a look at it, and if they're happy, I'll entertain a motion to approve it. Please. I'll move. Thank you, Mike. Second by Dominique. Um, who's calling the vote? Catherine. Catherine. Oh, Thank you, Mr. Warden. In front of me. Councillor Jaguer. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Mike Andrews. Yes. Justin Pennings. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. 4 0, the motion is carried. Thank you. Next item is adoption of our minutes from June the 17th. Are there any errors or omissions? Corrections? If there are none, do we have a motion to approve them, please? Uh, McPhail and uh, Justin, please call the vote. Councillor Jaguer. Yes. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Mike Andrews. Yes. Justin Pennings. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. 4 0, the motion is carried. Thank you. Reminder of disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. I see no movement, so I'll state that we have none. Um, item four and five have been reversed. So, first up is a community connectivity engagement strategy, and that's from our director of ITS. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. So what we heard at our previous meeting was that we needed to gather more information from the public and from ISPs and to validate that information, as well as provide a mechanism for the public to engage in the process. So the staff then put together this communication and engagement strategy, which I'm going to present right now for us. So next slide. So communication and engagement strategy, a robust public engagement process will result in a stronger, more relevant, connected Elgin strategy for our community. Communications and engagement strategy will aim to make the most of stakeholders and citizens problem solving potential, build community and create advocates for the connectivity plan. The strategy is focused on ensuring public engagement is tra transparent, focused and accessible and will serve as a guiding document detailing the county's approach to external public engagement. The strategy includes a background, purpose, vision and promise, process, opportunities, framework, target audiences, outreaching, outreach and communication tactics, and performance metrics. Background, as most of you know, the County of Elgin has prioritized improving high-speed internet connectivity for its residents and businesses. The Connectivity Committee has been established to address four primary challenges, availability, affordability, speed, and awareness. We've also engaged with IBI Group, and they will complete an analysis of our current state and provide recommendations for our future state. It's anticipated that this plan will have solutions and they will be completed by September of 2021. Coordination with other projects. There are active projects relating to connectivity or connected Elgin strategy. These include the TMP, the official plan review, community safety and well-being. And throughout the connected Elgin strategy, we will coordinate with these projects whenever possible. This will involve the following strategies, incorporating lessons learned and building on input received through recent engagement activities, aligning our messaging, coordinating engagement activities, distributing communication materials at related events and cross promoting at events or meetings whenever possible. Slide. So our timelines. So we wanted to put together the community engagement kickoff, which is what we've undertaken already. 
and that will uh, will include uh, launch of connected Elgin project site, which has been launched, distribution of the survey, and engagement strategy review, which we're going over now. Uh, second one will be collecting and collating data from the surveys and physically confirming infrastructure locations and documenting that. We will continue to connect with our residents who have expressed interest, monitor and respond any, to any comments on the connected Elgin project site and continue to engage and encourage feedback. Uh, step four will be, we're going to consolidate all that data from the surveys and infrastructure review and map that out in GIS with Brian's team. We'll also validate new data with IBI data. Step five is we're going to review the feedback received, continue to engage the public, continue to validate and update data and gather feedback from this committee. Finally, we will work with directly with IBI group to ensure recommendations align with our findings, re review recommendations as a committee, determine next steps, and present to council. I think we can skip the next one. So, yeah, purpose. Purpose of the Connected Elgin Communications and Engagement Strategy is to be clear about why we are engaging the community and how citizen input will be used to inform the Connected Elgin Strategy. Our community has told us that they want to be informed and heard. They want an open, transparent, accountable, and accessible local government now and for the future. It's our goal to build a community in which the public is engaged and active in decision-making about local issues where it's possible for anyone to join the conversation. Our engaged community county brings people together for conversations to address issues that impact them most, to solve shared problems, and to bring about positive social change. It involves people in decision-making process and encourages two-way dialogue with the county and helps us to make decisions that are more informed and reflective of our community's concerns and values. Other benefits of engaging our community include fostering trust between the county and its citizens, enabling more input from diverse audiences, increasing citizens' sense of civic responsibility and understanding of issues, and reducing conflict and looking for common ground. Next slide. Our vision and promise. Our vision is for citizens to have a meaningful role in the decisions that impact the quality of their life, specifically as it relates to the Connectivity Committee. Our promise is to provide a meaningful opportunity for citizens to participate in key issues and problem solving, to encourage two-way dialogue with the community, make it as easy as possible for anyone to join the conversation and to listen and report back to our community about the outcomes of the process. So this is a large table of the framework that we're using. Um, I don't know if I need to go through every um, section of it, but for the most part, we're wanting to engage our public and we're going to provide feedback whenever possible. Some tools and techniques that we're using are websites, social media, surveys, and we're also connecting directly with anyone that wants to, uh, um, that's inputted that they want us to reach out to them. So, next slide. So, this is our process. Our process is to be inclusive, accountable, and transparent, built on partnerships, to provide timely communication, to provide supported, or to keep them supported and resourced, and to evaluate and approve the process ongoing. We will design and deliver engagement process that foster respect for diverse values, interests, knowledge, and challenges of our citizens, and which allow everyone a reasonable opportunity to participate, contribute, and develop a balanced perspective. We will utilize plain language. We'll be clear about the reasons why citizens are being involved, their role, the level of engagement required, and we will report back to our community about the outcome of the process. We will work with community partners, individuals, groups, and organizations to increase our reach and seek mutually beneficial outcomes. We will provide information that is timely, accurate, balanced, easily understood, and accessible, and we will involve our citizens early in the process so that they have time to learn about the issues and actively participate. We will ensure that we allocate sufficient staff and financial resources to implement and evaluate 
our community engagement initiatives, and we will review and adjust our community engagement initiatives, measure outcomes, and look for ways to continuously improve our efforts. Our goals are to effectively communicate the connected Elgin strategy process and scope to the general public and its stakeholders, ensuring communications and engagement efforts are as wide reaching as possible and are accessible in format and content, meaning plain language. We'll educate the pub public about the connected Elgin strategy and tailor these messages accordingly to the audience. We'll engage the public to collect as much meaningful feedback regarding the connected Elgin strategy as possible. We will ensure that as many members of the general public and stakeholders are informed about the review and consultation process through formal and informal means. And we will ensure that underrepresented underrepresented voices have a meaningful opportunity to, partic to participate in the consultations. Our actions we will use community feedback to aid our understanding of the strengths, weaknesses, gaps, issues, opportunities in the current connected Elgin strategy as developed by the committee through recommendations from IBI. We'll determine the scope of changes and priorities for improvements to any recommendations. We'll creatively engage and communicate with a wide range of stakeholders, including residents, communities of interest, workers, organizations, and more. We'll provide opportunities throughout the connected Elgin strategy process for participants to provide meaningful, appropriate, actionable input that will be used to inform updates to the project by way of the connected Elgin project site. We'll implement an engagement process that is open, transparent, and respectful. We'll provide opportunities for involvement that are convenient and accessible and opportunities to engage communities of interest and underrepresented, underrepresented communities that are harder to reach. We'll clearly communicate the internet connectivity goals, what the engagement process can and cannot influence and how public input was used to shape the strategy. We'll combine engagement events and conversations with other projects. We'll implement innovative communication and engagement tactics when possible, and we'll understand the needs of the community and the stakeholders. It's a, just a illustration of the audience that we're trying to reach from IT staff, county council, this committee, all the way through local municipal councils and partners and things like that. So, Again, effective engagement begins with considering the needs of different audiences and the engagement communication tactics that are most appropriate for each group. The audience analysis ensures that connected Elgin strategies process offers the variety required to generate broad interest and feedbacks. Different groups will be engaged at various times throughout the process. So list of that. So next. So our engagement process. So Understanding the context engagement, we're going to distribute the survey and we're going to launch the engagement site. We're going to present summary of data collected and we're going to map it in GIS. We're going to develop a plan from receiving the feedback regarding. All the information collected from the public as well as the ISPs. And finally, we're going to take that feedback from the committee and present that to council. So phase one is gathering public feedback through the engage Elgin site and survey responses. Phase two will be to collate that data collected in phase one and confirm existing infrastructure and map that information using GIS. Phase four will be to present that data back to the public and internet service providers and encourage feedback and discussion and continue to update as more data becomes available. And phase four will be to ensure the data supports and aligns with the IBI recommendations. So phase one, some information we are able to present. SWIFT map, co current connectivity map, a glossary of terms, and a timeline of strategy development processes. Some questions we were asked. What areas of the county are underrepresented in the initial survey? What areas are potentially misrepresented in the initial survey. 
Does the information from the initial survey provide enough data for an accurate reflection? Will additional survey results change the overall landscape of the information presented? How will we use, how will the input be used? The input will define the current state of Algon County and will highlight areas for improvement that the strategy needs to address. Strengths, so the strategy needs to address strengths to maintain and enhance, gaps to fill, weaknesses to improve, and opportunities to realize. The, feed, the feedback will also inform policy and policy work or adjustments to existing policies. Some deliverables are going to be the online survey and paper survey that were delivered or distributed, uh, the engagement site that was developed and accepting engagement, and a completed engagement strategy. Phase two is going to be gathering information and illustrating our current state. So information that we'll be able to present will be the survey results and a confirmed infrastru infrastructure list. How will, how will the input be used? The survey input will be used to supplement existing data, providing the committee and consultants with a clear picture of connectivity gaps and barriers that exist in Algon. The input will inform the recommendations from IBI to the Connect Connectivity Committee and will help to determine which solutions are most viable. So deliverables are going to be the survey results summaries and updated GIS maps. Phase three will be to visualize our future and develop a plan. We'll be able to present a graphical representation of survey results and all existing infrastructure. We'll need to ask if the data is accurate and have we missed anything. This, uh, this information will augment and reinforce recommendations for future state before presenting to council for consideration. Deliver deliverables will be an accurate representation of the current landscape. Finally, we'll finalize the plan. There'll be a summary of feedback from ISPs and the public regarding data gathered on the GIS map. We'll have recommended solutions from IBI group. Some questions we'll need to ask. Does data and feedback align with IBI recommendations and is the IBI group recommendation feasible? How will we use this input? Public feedback will ensure data valid validity and provide supporting anecdotal evidence. And it will further inform IBI groups recommend recommended solutions and it will ensure that data aligns with the IBI group recommendations. Deliverables will be an IBI group recommendations to this committee and then subsequently a report to council. Our plan. So key messages are the core of every communications and engagement strategy. Key messages will help start and support conversation with the key audiences and help create clarity and focus while directing cohesive communications across all platforms. Connected Elgin strategy messaging will include the following key definitions, the importance of the internet connectivity, conversation starters, uh, scope for the connected Elgin strategy, connected Elgin strategy timeline, how people can become engaged, and why people should be participating. Just some things that we're getting back from our public, um, what we're trying to ask and how we're garnering some more uh, feedback from the public. Next slide. Our communication plan. To reach out to as many people as possible, the IT and administrative services teams will communicate regularly and effectively throughout each stage of the connected Algon strategy process. This includes advertising engagement opportunities, specifically online and paper surveys and events, regular updates on the connected Algon strategy status and check-ins. We anticipate that this will cultivate interest and understanding about the connected Algon strategy, why it is important and why people should provide input into the connected Algon strategy. This will be done through clear messaging about opportunities for engagement, and how feedback will be used through promotional material, engagement displays, and reporting. Clear communications that build awareness and excitement about the significance of the Connected Algon strategy, potential evolution of areas of focus through promotional material. Evaluation. Public engagement will be administered during engagement activities with Engage Algon site as a tool to be used to connect back with the community. 
Using guidance from the communications and engagement strategy, measures of, of success will be based on the following goals. Our community demonstrates a culture of public engagement. Public engagement displays mutual respect and benefit. Public engagement is inclusive and accessible. Public engagement processes are effective. Public engagement activities are well managed and efficient. Next slide. Here's some broad tactics that we use in all of our engagement uh, strategies. Some will be used with the connected Elgin, but not all of them. So uh, we have place based, strategic interviews, online, and then hard to reach and in person. So place based are things such as displays, pop up boards, things like that. Um, and there's a list of target audiences. Strategic interviews and or presentations. Next slide, please. This is more uh, when residents reach out and want more tailored questions answered and things like that. Online is what we're focusing on mostly right now because of our COVID restrictions and whatnot. So that involves online questionnaires, surveys, and social media as well as the website. And then hard to reach. Um, so we did provide print based surveys, mass mail outs, and they were all sent out, I think, in the Eldon County market. Um, and then in person, which is not something that we're really doing that much of right now, but it is an option if there are residents that would like to. Uh, talk to any of us uh, in person, we can arrange for that as well. So I know it's a very long um, presentation. It's built off a framework that we're, like I said, that we're using for a lot of our engagement strategies. Um, so it, it outlines a lot of tools that maybe aren't going to be used specifically in this, but that are available for us if we need to. Um, so if there are any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Well, thank you, Jeff. Do we have questions or comments for Jeff? I'd like to thank you for my point, but Dami, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so just to clarify, so, so I'm thinking, so one of your statements is that you're going to, in the strategy, you're going to launch a survey. So my understanding is that this survey you're referring to is the one that's already been launched recently. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Um, and so we have a chance, I don't know, Mr. Chair, on the uh, part of the agenda, perhaps this is a, a good time to discuss that. Discuss Dom, the survey itself because I had some questions. Don, make a hate to interrupt, but we maybe turn your uh, video off. We just can't understand you. Yeah, I mean, is this a little bit better? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I was just wondering, I wanted to ask a few more questions about the survey, wondering if this was a good time to discuss that or um, later on on the agenda. No, absolutely. Go ahead. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, so I, I wanted to clarify, I was trying to jog my memory. So, did the, the latest survey that's going out, that, that's out right now, um, did we discuss that at the committee level, just in terms of its uh, purpose, the content, the, the design of it? Um, no, actually, we did not in the interest of time and trying to, uh, coordinate everything with IBI. It was a, uh, staff decision to, uh, do our best effort in putting together, uh, what we felt were relevant questions and assemble that survey and get it out as quick as possible. So, Mr. Chair, I, I have concerns, um, about that. Okay, certainly as a committee member, it caught me by a surprise because um, I did not know we had agreed to that as a committee. And in the past, 
we've had a chance as a committee to comment on the design of the questions or the, the, the positioning of it. And um, so I'm wondering, so for right now, I would like to know that why we went out with a, a second survey uh, that is very similar to the one we conducted in the fall and what's the intent, because if, if I'm going to guess that the intent was to increase the amount of data, um, I am concerned about the optics based on the feedback that I've received, um, which uh, is discouraging people from participating because I said, so didn't I do this already? Why are you asking me again? And how come you're no further ahead almost one year later? And uh, so, I've, like I said, lots, lots of concerns and wish we could have discussed this earlier because there was perhaps an opportunity to even say in the opening line of the survey to say, we conducted this survey in the fall. Um, we want, we didn't reach as many people as we wanted. If you, if you filled it out already, thank you. Um, if not, uh, please go ahead. Like right now, it just looks like we're um, not at progressing uh, in a in a strategic way as much as uh, I would like to the public to know and believe. All right, I am listening. Um, in the interest of moving this project along. And we will all recognize the importance and the urgency of this. Um, I don't feel as strenuously as you do, Dominic, to be very blunt. Um, we are in the summer months and I can see staff here working diligently and I applaud them for that. If they're trying to do things, um, I find a hard time to criticize that, but uh, I'd certainly am listening to your comments. Julie? Uh, if I may, Mr. Warden, I'll just, uh, there's, there's a lot to unpack there and um, I, I'll do my best to address as many of the points as, uh, as what you've, you've raised, Councillor Jaguer. Um, the first comment I have is that we've had the survey available for eight days and so far, um, just the online responses, we've received 305. So you'll, you'll recall that the first time we surveyed residents, we received um, just over 400. And the survey was open for multiple weeks. And, and the feedback that we're receiving at the county is a bit different from perhaps that you are, what you are receiving locally. So people are, are very pleased that uh, I think they missed the survey first time around. Uh, so we are capturing a higher response rate as a result of what uh, may seem like a duplicative survey or duplicating our, our efforts here at the county. Uh, we have been working very closely with IBI and as we indicated at the previous committee meeting, most recent committee meeting, um, we recognized that we have a responsibility to fill in some of the gaps uh, that the consultants um, wouldn't necessarily be addressing through their work in assessing Elgin's connectivity challenges. Uh, so we did um, pursue this as one of many means um, of engaging the public. Uh, and I, I accept full responsibility for um, having perhaps pushed this too quickly in an effort to keep this project progressing. Um, it was, it was at my direction that uh, this survey was published and distributed. Thank you for that. I, if I may, Mr. Chair, Go just ahead. to say that in the past, um, I think even, so I appreciate the, the speed. I appreciate the intent, um, but I think as committee members, I certainly see myself as an ambassador of, of um, what we're doing and, and the overall connectivity strategy. And uh, so I think the element of surprise is, is never a good thing. Plus, I think we, we could have improved even the, the quality of it a little bit. And I think in the past, even the one we conducted in, in October was circulated uh, by email to committee members um, because of the time crunch that we were under. Perhaps the, 
that would have been an opportunity again, just to give us a heads up and say, here's what we're thinking of of sending out any comments because it's it's going out. It's got to go out next week, and I think all of us could have appreciated the the urgency as we have since the beginning. So, but thank you for the uh, the, the positioning, and I I just think strategically, uh, and perhaps there's time to uh, correct that. Uh, since I think it's going to be open for another couple of weeks, um, I think the wording at the beginning needs to show that it's not a duplication; it's a continuation, and like some recognition that this is this is coherent strategic work. Thank you, Julie. Uh, thanks, Mr. Orton. Through you to um, connectivity committee members. Uh, please accept my sincerest apologies for having uh, uh, taken a misstep here. We'll certainly um, make every effort to uh, keep the committee informed of all steps moving forward. So, my apologies. Further, further comments? Duncan. Just, just one question, and uh, maybe it's just me, but... <clears throat> Where would I be able to obtain or direct somebody to this survey as uh, a lot of my community does not receive the Elgin County market? Uh, is there is some is there somewhere that we can go to to uh, find out what uh, exactly uh, is on the survey? Julie. Uh, thanks, Mr. Warden. Uh, so we have, uh, as we've done in the past with surveys uh, that are similar to this one, we've reached out to our local municipal partners. Uh, we have tapped into uh, as many publicly available spots as are as possible right now. So we have the survey available at all of our library locations and uh, county facilities. Um, we also we're pushing this through social media, and so those who don't necessarily have connectivity at home may have access to a cell phone, in which case they'd be able to fill in the survey electronically that way. Um, we are limited because of the pandemic and some of our municipal offices are not yet open, but we've sent uh, the survey to our municipal partners seeking their support and their guidance through this process as well. Um, so we did recognize that uh, the direct mail out would not through the Elgin County market would not necessarily reach all households. Um, but we, if you are aware of anyone who needs a copy of the survey, encourage them to, to give any one of us a call. Uh, we'll make sure that. All of you um, are equipped with the information you need to support community members in their um, in, in our information seeking efforts. Thank you. And as Dominique suggests, we we all are ambassadors. Um, so there, there's plenty of people out there who are not aware of either one of the surveys. So I've taken quite often when I'm out for a walk and I ask neighbors about their internet. And people who think they have good internet really don't, but uh, there's a lot to be learned. So it's it's all about communications. The more so the more we talk about, the more people find out and and let us know. So further comments. Justin, do you get it in your Elgin County market, or did you notice? Um. I might just put mine right in the recycling bin. Sorry. <laughs> I know that happens. Further comments or are we finished? I want to thank Jeff. I, I, a lot of work went into that. Uh, tremendous amount and um, a lot of it we knew, uh, but now we have a plan and it's uh, things, you know, it, it's right in front of us. So if we follow that plan, we're going to get some pretty good results, in my opinion. But Mike, any comments? You're muted. Sorry about that. Um, no, I'm 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 comfortable with uh, with where things lie. I I I like Justin. I don't even throw my. Elgin County market in the blue box. We've opted out, which was a challenge doing that. But uh, I, I haven't. I have. I have not heard from anyone in in my sphere anyway in the community down this way about the survey. So I'm not sure how widely it's it's been received. 
or being responded to from uh, from the east end of the county. But I'm I'm comfortable with uh, with what's taking place anyway. Okay, Julie. Um, thanks, Mr. Warden. Through you to committee members, we're absolutely open to suggestions from committee members as to how we could improve uh, the distribution of this survey. So, if you have suggestions, ways that might work within your community or your networks, um, we would love to hear them. All right, if there's no further comments, I guess we'll move on. We've got uh, current state assessment from the IBI group next. That would be, is that you, Keith? Yes, it is. Good afternoon. Welcome. Thank you. Whenever uh, you're ready. Very good. Thank you. I uh, just making sure my sound quality is okay before we start. Looks good. Sounds good. Okay, great. Please let me know. Otherwise, I'm, I'm in a location where uh, the internet may not be as reliable as I would want it to be. So, thank you and, and good afternoon. Um, we're uh, myself and uh, Jason McBeth, my colleague uh, are here uh, to present you with our findings in terms of the current state assessment. This presentation is uh, an accompaniment and presentation to the uh, uh, to the report that was also um, provided to the county. So, as uh, we're all aware, this is the, the first chapter in our effort to um, assess. Well, this is the current state assessment is the first chapter. Um, we are following this work by building on uh, the findings here in terms of uh, identifying follow up action items and uh, recommendations that uh, for the county to to digest and for this committee to review and provide feedback on. So um, that that is the the purpose. Uh, we'll cover the data sources used and the classifications and some of the results um, that we have at a at a county level and then by municipality, and then discuss next steps. Um, next slide, please. As I mentioned, uh, this is this is the first chapter of of our uh, of our report out. Um, and uh, our best efforts uh, were made to use as many and diverse data sources as possible. And certainly the, the ongoing uh, survey efforts will uh, continue to fill in uh, the picture with, with more and more data as we go. So it, it, is, uh, it is an ongoing process to currently keep our, our fingers, uh, uh, ourselves on the fingertips of uh, the, the exact current state. Next slide, please. So, a, a quick listing of, of the data sources that uh, help us paint the composite picture. Um, I won't read them back to you, but there's many public and um, other sources of data that were used. Um, and we'll, we are engaged with uh, local expertise within the county to help us uh, validate some of the areas of, of uncertainty um, that we've identified through this report process. Next slide. Uh, just to remind us of, of the definitions, um, the, the federal standard um, is 5010, and the, uh, we've applied that, uh, that bar. Uh, we can argue as to whether the bar is, is high enough or not, but that is, is the, the lowest bar that uh, we've applied to the data. The uh, uh, and it in terms of classification, the, uh, the service must meet both, both parameters, both the 50. Uh, uh, 50 and 10. Next slide. So you'll see through the report out, um, we've, we've completed the assessment. We have results uh, viewed through two, uh, two lenses, both on a premises basis and a road network segment length. The, uh, we have areas that we've flagged for further investigation. Um, some of those those reasons why they're flagged, um, where we have conflicting data, uh, uh, conflicting data sets, or local internet speed test results, um, current or, or future infrastructure, um, the uh, the some of the the known issues in in terms of uh, the the reports of of 
service or lack of service along routes that are flagged as otherwise um, having service or not service. Um, and again, local feedback. Next slide. So looking countywide um, and, and to paint the picture of, of what you're seeing, um, areas flagged in green, uh, colored in green, these are road segments, um, identified as, as served based on our current state assessment. Uh, areas mapped in red are, are flagged as underserved. And the areas flagged in yellow um, are areas where that we've highlighted that we want to, to further investigate and, and uh, un, uh, explore why we're seeing um, discrepancies from different data sources in the, in the areas of yellow. Um, so certainly the, um, uh, it allows us to, to focus efforts, um, I'll say in, in two areas, one areas that are red and clearly red and, and, and there shouldn't be much debate. Um, and areas of yellow, which, um, you know, I think uh, I'll, I'll ask Jason to chime in on this point, but these are areas that um, previously may have been flagged as green um, and we're seeing conflicting results there. So we want, to, we want to further investigate and validate that data using, using local resources and other techniques as, as we've identified. Uh, Jason, have I, have I got yeah, Keith, absolutely. Thanks. So um, the confidence level on the red areas is, is quite high. The confidence level on the green areas is also quite high. Um, largely attributing to the yellow areas is, is exactly that. Either we've got out of our limited first survey results, um, conflicting speed test results along those routes, alluding to the, the um, lack of infrastructure, or perhaps lack of speed available in the area. And some of it is just, uh, we were unable to access certain ISPs infrastructure. So while it's reported um, green, if you will, at a federal road segment level, uh, we had nothing to validate that in, in a lot of these areas. Some of it was anecdotal as provided by uh, your, your county members there of residents expressing displeasure and, and fighting the good fight, if you will, to, to get better internet. Uh, some of it was directly from committee members anecdotally saying, well, I know for a fact that along those routes, although there's fiber in the ditch uh, that you you can't get good service. So classifying them yellow was, was taken as, as a real identification to, to investigate further and really narrow down at a ground level what's going on in some of these areas. Perfect, thank you. Okay, uh, let's, let's move to the next slide. Um, and at a, a tabular level, looking at the data, uh, you can start to see some of the, the percentages that, uh, that you just appreciated visually on the map. So, you know, I, I, I think the, um, the data certainly points us to, uh, um, to, to the scenario of the, the acute nature of the problem and, and a rural problem where, um, in terms of road segments, we see that, um, that, that there are a lot of challenges, roughly 71% of, of road segments are underserved. And in terms of a premises count, um, we see you know, only about 53% uh, of, the pot of the premises showing as, as you know, I'll say conclusively served with the rest either being underserved or the 15% of premises requiring Further investigation. So moving on, on to a view at the municipality level, um, and just to sort of step through the various things that you're looking at on each of these maps, um, we, we've presented the data um, with, with a couple different views. Um, so as we as we click through this, um, if we could just build to the next slide, this 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 example sort of builds on itself. You'll see the the fiber optic infrastructure that on uh, on this map you'll see is is in yellow. Um, if we click through to the next slide, um, we see the locations of of radio towers, um, and building on that, the um, County speed test data is also overlaid, color coded by speed. Um, green is good, uh, red is not good. 
um, clicking through to the next slide, um, you'll see the, the inset of the uh, survey data layered on top of the, the ICED road segment data in the, in the inset map. And another click uh, gets you to the uh, ICED data that is verified by, by county survey results. So that, uh, that provides the, the, the composite picture. And as we step through each of these um, uh, municipalities, then we, uh, I'll, I'll get you to click one more slide for me. Um, you'll see the, the information summarized. Um, again, uh, another click as we build the picture and uh, stepping through at, a, at the, the map, the geography level, then the premise count view and another click and you'll see the road, road length counts summarized uh, and tabulated on this information. So that gives you an orientation as to the, the data that you're seeing uh, through this, this presentation and, and the report. It is a fairly dense set of data and we, uh, we've certainly analyzed it through a few different lenses to help us give us a solid foundation in which to build our recommendations upon. So uh, we'll, we'll step through the other municipalities at a, a, a bit more of a, a pace, but um, certainly um, as you look through the report and, and have time to digest it, um, you'll be able to see uh, the specifics and, and the composite data picture that's, that's been developed uh, for each of the municipalities as, uh, as we move from uh, west uh, through the county. So we'll just keep uh, keep clicking. Please uh, please pause me or or jump in if if there are specific questions. Um, so we have uh, Dutton Dunwich, um, and then Southwold, and continuing on, we have uh, Central Elgin. Keith, if I may, in Central Algon, is that a surprise to you? That's my, my yeah, mentality. yeah. It's uh, what is I'll say a bit um, surprising and I'm sure frustrating is the amount of red, of course, that we see here. Um, it's uh, yeah, coming. From, you know, my background prior prior to consulting is is working with one of the large national carriers, and I I know they are very business case and rate of return driven. So if you're a, if you're a shareholder, you you love their management approach. If you're a rural resident, um, it is frustrating in that there's you know there's not much of a commercial business case um, to to build out beyond the the areas that you see that are in green and and yellow. So it, it does point to the need and, and I guess uh, the need for public investment um, to, uh, to provide uh, a business model where residents can get service. It, it is frustrating. You can pick a point anywhere there, 10 minutes one way, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you're in the dead nothing and then you're, you're right back into civilization it seems. Yeah, it's yeah. I I have to say that it, it, it's a very uh, uh, common uh, distribution of service that that we see, and I'll I'll go so far as to say rural Canada, where um, if the infra where the infrastructure ends in in terms of urban or semi urban development, um, the the level of service basically falls off a cliff. You you go from having not bad service to to next to nothing. Um, unless you're relying on uh, fixed wireless or satellite providers. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Mr. Warden? Yes, Duncan, go ahead. I, um, I have a bit of an issue going on here. This is going into my sixth hour of Zoom meetings today. Uh, I'm struggling with, uh, with a bit of power, so I could maybe leave you here shortly, but I just wanted to make a quick comment on the uh, the fact that uh, we've identified certainly a lot of underserviced areas, uh, certainly in my municipality, 
uh, I fall into that category, but uh, the reality is that I have about a 20 download and about a 4.2 uh, or 3 upload, which uh, certainly uh, is adequate for, for my needs. Uh, so if, if we're looking at that 50, uh, uh, 50 download speed, there are going to be a lot of people, and that's one classification that you do not have in your graphs. And that is, uh, yes, you have a lot of underserviced, but I don't see anywhere where there's any recognition to people that have no service whatsoever. Uh, and that's a large component of people uh, in my community. Uh, a lot of people are, you know, getting along so-called underserved, but, uh, you know, that is satisfactory to their needs. I'm, I'm really wondering how many of our residents uh, fit in that category of, no service whatsoever. Mm. Uh, it's a good question, and and we almost have to pull apart the question a little bit in terms of of the type of service. Um, our, our findings uh, indicate that from a uh, countywide perspective, that uh, that satellite providers and mobility providers tend to have almost ubiquitous service available across the county. Uh, I, I'm sure there might be some very localized um, hotspots or challenging locations, um, but I uh, we we do have a later a layer of data that that's not represented here, um, but we could certainly uh, identify where there's a lack of what I'll call terrestrial service. So terrestrial service being either fiber optic infrastructure. Uh, fixed wireless um, or any other terrestrial type of service that that doesn't include, um, you know, accepting satellite based services and uh, services provided from from cell phone mobility providers. See the 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 defining issue in a lot of issues, areas in my community is uh, uh, I, I did see on one of your map your. Uh, uh, estimated range of uh, fixed towers, uh, that's all relevant on uh, topographical uh, uh, maps that uh, indicate uh, what the, the uh, what the tree cover is. Uh, you can be within that uh, within that area and have absolutely no service at all and don't have any opportunity to get service because the tree cover, totally negates the wireless uh, reaching your uh, your residence. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a layer after layer of, of barriers that are out there. And uh, I, I don't know how uh, how we go about uh, solving those problems, but uh, it, it's, it's a big, big issue when you take a look at the map and look at all the red uh, that's on that map. Uh, it would really be interesting to know just exactly, the, uh, you know, how many people do have Certainly not 50-10, but do have adequate service that uh, uh, for their needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't uh, need, sorry, point. go ahead, Keith. Uh, no, I'll, I'll uh, please go ahead. Uh, Dominique has a question, comment. Go ahead, Dominique. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, I wasn't sure because I was trying to reconcile, maybe Cecil can comment in terms of uh, fixed wireless towers i thought there was one in port bruce which i didn't or near port bruce which i didn't see on the map and i was wondering when it comes to towers um how confident are you with the data because I, I would think for for towers that would be easy data to obtain um, Cecil speaking. Um, so the, a lot of the uh, the tower data that you do see listed there is stuff that I've sourced visually as I've been driving by. Um, what and, and the the radiuses that you see in most cases have been provided by the ISPs in their own uh, documentation of their own service maps on their own websites. The problem that they all lack, and this is what Duncan was alluded to, is the uh, actual um, lay lay of the land, uh, the geographic features. Um, without having the detailed information, such as the the heights of these towers, the type of antennas, if they're a um, uh, individual panels or if they are 
uh, an omni antennas uh, and not knowing their wavelengths. It's been extremely difficult to calculate what the actual coverage is. If those ISPs are willing to give that, there are tools that will allow you to do it, but that might be beyond the scope of what uh, IBI has been tasked to do with, uh, to present to us, but it, it is possible. But again, without somebody um, giving us the information or the details, it's it's gonna be incredibly difficult to know if what I've seen and what I've provided is truly accurate. Julie has a qu comment. Uh, just in, in follow up, we are hoping to use some of the survey results and actually, as Jeff uh, mentioned, get some boots on the ground and and try to identify those um, areas that have no service, as you've mentioned, Councillor McPhail, or those that have very limited service. So uh, we recognize that IBI is looking for the 5010, and we're hoping that our other means of engaging the public will help us identify um, the other areas. All right. Um, uh, if there's no other questions, I'll I'll uh, jump in. I'll, I certainly echo Cecil Cecil's comments with respect to radio coverage. Um, a lot of the information that that is shared from uh, fixed wireless providers is is based on what they make public and recognize what they make public is primarily for marketing purposes to attract uh, potential leads and subscribers, but. Oftentimes, the uh, the actual conditions that the subscriber has, namely uh, height of trees um, and uh, their relative um, position to the the service provider's uh, radio tower, um, may leave them without service. So it it, uh, it it is certainly beyond the the scope of what we're doing to to do the the RF engineering and and predict what their coverage would be. Um, for them, but um, I do. I'll reinforce Julie's comment that the the survey is the best. Without trying to um, get into the engineering of service provider networks, the end result is is that the, either the subscriber has um, no service for serv something below fifty ten or a service standard that we can identify as as fifty ten or better. All right, um, I'll, I'll keep stepping through some of these maps here. Um, I, you know, we, we uh, uh, can certainly uh, appreciate the maps and uh, of course the maps are, are available to, to drill down at a larger scale um, and, and format um, for, for purposes that uh, administration may want to undertake and uh, as we move forward. So uh, Malahide, uh, presented and uh, and then moving uh, finally to to Bayham. So um, if we I believe one more slide click will bring us to a, a summary. Uh, this is a summary table that is uh, tabulated by premise counts. So we can see the um, the uh, tabular summary by county and, and then brought up to a uh, an aggregate total um, and identify the uh, the areas that we flagged in yellow that require further <coughs> investigation and, and where our focus will be in trying to run down some of that uncertainty. The next slide is a similar table but organized and reported by road segment. So we're seeing road segment uh, kilometers tabulated here by municipality and, and summarized at a county level. Uh, yeah, so in, in summary, certainly the, um, the, the table and the data start to define the magnitude of the problem and the geographic area of the problem to focus on. So I. I certainly feel we've um, we've added some clarity to the discussion of of where to focus uh, and how to focus and and uh, provided some information that will will likely will inform uh, our recommendations as we're in the process of developing them. To recap our plan next steps, um, we will we will continue data gathering um, in terms of identifying areas. Um, where we where we need to 
um, deal with the the data discrepancies, the areas in yellow. Um, continued to um, targeted outreach to local ISPs to um, to help in that process. Uh, really, our, our next focus will be um, developing the options that um, that we see and some of the uh, conceptual level costing that that goes with those options in, in terms of how to solve the problem and the appropriate um, mechanism or mechanisms to solve the problem. So we're, we're now, even though we're always interested in better defining current state, um, we will use the, the basis of, of what we have to allow us to start to build recommendations, um, which will be brought back um, to this committee for, for review and, and input. And that is the last slide of the presentation. Thank you, Keith. Um, I found that one bullet point that 70% of the geography, that, that number in that space, that's a, that's a tough one. And, um, questions or comments? Uh, I have one, Mr. Warden. Go ahead. Uh, through you to Keith, um, I do believe that if there is coming up election time and promises are uh, like mosquitoes in Muskoka right now, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think that all this data that we are collecting is data that's going to be critical if we are going to, at some point in time, be able to apply to uh, upper levels of government for assistance and funding. Is that not correct, Keith? Yes, de definitely it, it, it is important. Um, a lot of the programs we've seen, of course, federally and provincially have been, uh, have rested on the, the ISED data as what the government feels the source of truth is. We know many counties um, have uh, been looking for processes to, uh, I'll say, uh, perhaps appeal is too strong a word, but it improve the, the federal database data with ground truth data. And, and this is certainly surveys and, um, and this information puts you in a stronger position to apply for funding in areas that might have previously been flagged as ineligible for funding because they were green. Um, but definitely, I, you know, regardless of that discussion, I, I think the fact that your 70% of your, your road segments are, are flagged as red um, by the, you know, the most senior level of government certainly will open up the doors to federal funding. Um, certainly the ICON program in Ontario uh, aligned to that methodology. Uh, we know that the, the Ontario government re very recently announced a, a fairly substantial additional funding envelope that will be um, managed through a reverse auction process. We're not exactly sure what that process is, but um, we're carefully following the, the information sessions to understand the mechanisms to, to participate in that reverse auction process to, to fund infrastructure improvements. Well, I, I think that a lot of the data that you provided on those maps is not surprising to any of us on this committee, but to a bureaucrat in, in Ottawa, it's the language that we have to take to them so that they can look and understand what we already know. It's just a process that we have to go through, and certainly it might be somewhat uh, uh, we might, as a committee, might look at it as somewhat uh, a painful process to uh, gain information that we already know, but we are playing to a larger audience that uh, I, I won't uh, use an, uh, a description of what they know and what they don't know, uh, but it's a, something that we just we just have to do to have our uh, our house in order if and when something comes along that we can take advantage of. I totally agree. I think arming your provincial and federal government representatives locally with the data or, you know, the, the highest level summary of this data, uh, I think allows them to advocate for, uh, for the need for, for Elgin County. I think that's a very, very valid point because if, if we give them the, the plan that will provide internet, they're going to look very good as well. And that's what. That's what they're looking for. So, mm -hmm. 
Further comments? A lot of good information today. Um, a lot of work's gone in behind the scenes and I wanna thank everyone involved. Um, like Duncan has said, it's a lot of it's not surprising, but we're getting it in plan form. Further comments or are we finished? Well, thank, thank you, you. again. Yep. Interesting, very interesting. So I'm, I'm getting the feeling my dad always said that time and money can fix a lot of things. And I'm thinking that this comes into that category. If we have enough time, <laughs> enough money, we'll do it. But uh, all right, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. We'll sign off at this point. There's nothing right. further. Have a good day. You too. Move on to correspondence. Do we have any? I've seen none. Do we have any new business? I'm not hearing any. Have we picked a next meeting date? Jeff, what do you suggest? I'd like to suggest the 19th of August. Um, the survey does close on August 6th. That would give us a little over a week to collate some of that data. And I think it also aligns with IBI, um, some of their reporting and stuff. So I'd suggest the 19th if, if possible. At um, two o'clock again, how's that fit people's schedules? No one speaking up. I'll take that as a yes. It, it may or may not fit my schedule, uh, Mr. Chair. I, I am away that week, and I'm not sure what kind of connectivity I'll have. But uh, I would, I would suggest carry on anyway. All right. Thank you for that. Fingers crossed you can join us. I might have more than water in my glass. <laughs> Come on. I'm needing an excuse here, Mike, because I'm hoping to be back here on the 19th too. <laughs> All right. I do not see anything else on my agenda. If there's nothing further, I want to thank everyone for your time this afternoon. Again, I want to thank staff. There's been a lot of work since our last meeting, and I, I certainly appreciate it. I think we are moving forward. So, as always, stay safe and thanks for just turning in. We need a motion to adjourn. Oh, yes. Procedures. We need someone to move adjournment. Justin, seconder, please. Mike, and <laughs> thirded by Dominique. Please call the vote. <laughs> Councillor, thank you. Councillor Jaguar. Yes. Councillor McPhail. Yes. Mike Andrews. Yes. Justin yes. Pennings. Yes. Joshua Kiria. Yes. Mr. Warden. Yes. Five or sorry, six zero the motion or yes, six zero the motion is carried. Thank you. We are adjourned. Stay safe. <laughs>